Okay, so I am practicing. <laughs> I'm doing video clips and recording different things throughout the day. So obviously you just saw I was making lunch for Hadid and I was showing you <clears throat> the, the outcome of the taco soup. Now, I, I believe this is, in fact, what I'm going to share with you is I believe this will be a video that this is not to warn and Clara now, but this is to warn and Clara in the future <clears throat> because I would assume that, yeah, actually I'm not even going to speak it because I don't want to speak any word curses, but for the future I am documenting these kind of things. Um, <clears throat> one of which is today, as you guys know, you may or may not know, well, I'm, you will know by the time you watch this video when you're older, is that <clears throat> I am pursuing um, changing um, parenting and custody and visitation and all of that that goes with it in the state of Washington because that is where Washington has the jurisdiction. <clears throat> with that being said, of course, Brian is trying to gather whatever he can, whatever false information that he has um, against me um, regarding the hearing that we have coming up next week. So I want to share with you my response. <clears throat> so there was a parenting coordinator that was, um, um, I guess you could say, oh, the power just came back on. And he's switching out some electrically. So the power has been off. Um, but anyways, there was a parenting coordinator that was appointed. Judicially, they have no jurisdiction. The Oregon court did not have jurisdiction to appoint the parenting coordinator, which is what I am challenging right now on appeal. But not only that, <clears throat> because of this, and God is just so good, even though I was like, Lord, again, I feel like I'm failing. Why is this? Well, He's uprooting everything. That is truly what he's doing. Because what has happened is they didn't have exclusive continuing jurisdiction. The court did not have exclusive continuing jurisdiction when they made the original judgment. They had jurisdiction over our disillusion, our divorce. Totally. Thank God. Thank God. That is final. Um, <clears throat> however... They had no jurisdiction to modify. They didn't have jurisdiction to continue doing what they did or even to make the very, very loose parenting um, <clears throat> custody orders that they did. So they required a bunch of, well, let's just say loose steps um, that allowed the um, continued legal um, adversities, legal entanglement to continue, but this will backfire. Um, so I get an email from the parenting coordinator and the parenting coordinator that the court appointed without jurisdiction. And there's a lot to that. I don't know if you guys ever decide to go into law and practice law, but it is so intricate but yet it's so very, very clear. Oregon adopted the, uni um, the Uniform Child Custody Jurisdiction Enforcement Act, also known as the UCCJEA. This delineates between what state has jurisdiction when you're dealing with two states. So they, uh, they appointed a parenting coordinator without jurisdiction Meaning they don't have the law behind them to allow them. That would be like me um, pulling someone over on the road, issuing a ticket and saying that I have the lawful right to issue the ticket because they've been speeding. And I have the right because I'm a police officer. Well, that would be a lie, right? I have no training, I have no license, I have no jurisdiction to give someone else a license. Well, it's the same case in this situation. <clears throat> so they appointed without law 
with without law, they appointed someone to be a parenting coordinator, which by the way, hasn't contacted me until now because I'm looking to get jurors or get jurisdiction in another state and change parenting. So I get this email from, um, you want to see if the light turns on? Yay. And there was light. Um, so I get this email from her and my heart actually goes out to her because she's a lawyer. She went to law school and she is now a parent coordinator. What does that tell you? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mrs. Faber. I don't know what happened, um, but I know that when I begin practicing law, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna practice law. I'm going to be in litigation or whatever the, in, it'll probably be litigation. Um, I'm not gonna be acting as a parent coordinator. I'm gonna be a lawyer. So I'm sorry to this woman. I, I'm sorry, my heart goes out to you. I don't know what happened that you decided to start being parent coordinator. Um, anyways, with that being said, <clears throat> here's the email from her and then I'm gonna re read the response. And again, I'm doing this not because you're gonna be watching this now, but you're gonna be watching in the future and I want you guys to know like everything that has happened and transpired, it's literally like a circus. And I laugh, I, Hadi's like, I can't believe you're handling this so well. You're not angry and bitter. I'm not anymore. I laugh, this is a circus. And um, I'm not being affected. I know they want me to get offended and get angry and mad because that's exactly what Satan wants. I'm not going to. I'm gonna look at this stuff, these papers, these emails and just go, wow. Like really, is this the best you can do? Um. So this is her email to me. Hi, Elizabeth. This is Sandy Faber. By the way, she's a parent coordinator. She's been appointed as a parenting coordinator, but she's an attorney. She doesn't say that in here. <clears throat> but she does tell me she's the appointed parenting coordinator in Oregon. Brian has asked me for a declaration that you have not engaged in services and have not completed the steps of the Oregon plan. Right now, you have not engaged in services with me and you have not provided me with any documentation that you've engaged in other services. So, I would be able to sign that declaration. I want to give you a chance to provide me with the documentation if you have engaged in any services. Can you please get back to me by noon tomorrow, either with the documentation or letting me know if you do plan to provide documentation and when. Feel free to give me a call if you'd like to discuss by phone. Best. Sandy. <clears throat> that was her closing. So here's my response. <clears throat> Again, I am grateful that you'll be able to watch these someday because obviously um, I'm sure that Brian is keeping you from me and trying to keep his narrative going. And <clears throat> it saddens me. Um, that I can't have an influence, a positive influence, because we can see the influence that he has today. And we can see the fruit of his influence in the life of my own, my other child. <clears throat> All right, so here is, and I say other child, meaning Wyatt, that was never his. But yet somehow there has been such a great influence upon my son, even to the point that he has turned from me. I'm going to leave that, that as it is. Here's my response to this. Um, <clears throat> what do we call her? Parent coordinator. Thank you for your email dated March 27th, 2024 regarding the appointment of a parent coordinator. I appreciate your understanding as this is our first correspondence and there has been a confusion due to a change in my address. I am deeply saddened by the current situation where my children have been deprived of their mother's presence. This loss is not only mine, but is profoundly left, profoundly felt by the most vulnerable parties involved, my children. I'm gonna reread that one. This loss is not only mine, but is profoundly felt by the most vulnerable parties involved, my children. 
In March of 2022, I sent you a notice appealing your appointment for several reasons. The most critical issue is that the court lacks subject matter jurisdiction based on the UWCJEA, which is what I was talking about earlier, the Uniform Child um, Custody Jurisdiction Enforcement Act, Oregon lost exclusive subject matter jurisdiction when Washington became the new home state. <clears throat> Consequently, all orders, including the appointment of a parent coordinator, should be vacated. And that's what I'm working on in appeal. Why am, while I am open to the idea of working with you, I believe it is crucial to acknowledge the potential consequences of proceeding under an order that may be vacated. As a member of the Oregon Bar, I am confident that you understand the implications of this situation. <clears throat> Despite being awarded supervised parenting time by the court, I have been denied this right in all forms. I was not even permitted to wish my children a happy birthday, a right that Mr. Skog denied to both my husband and myself. Moreover, the appointment of the parent coordinator appears to be based on my belief system rather than any harm to my children. It is worth asking whether it is fair to require a mother to renounce her internal belief system. To answer your questions accurately, I need to know what are these services that you and or Brian will be claiming that I have not engaged in? Additionally, what are the steps of this organ plan? I'd be grateful for you to send me a copy of these services and these steps that I may have or haven't completed. <clears throat> Please find attached a copy of the notice of appeal for both the final judgment and the parent coordinator. Our shared goal should be to prioritize the well-being of my children and work efficiently toward reuniting us. The role of a mother is vital in their lives. I am open to any suggestions that you may have to begin this communication and contact with my children, including but not limited to a counselor that is mutually agreed upon. And I did capitalize mutually <clears throat> because there's a history in this case, right? I'm sure you guys would agree and yeah. Um, I look forward to your response and our collaborative effort to reunite Warren and Clara with me, their mother. Thank you so much. Truly yours, Elizabeth Bonetta. <clears throat> so that is my response. And um, I, will, I will continue to pursue um, my legal right. No, how about this? My God-given right to be your mother, period. This is not even about justice. This isn't, isn't about pointing blame. This isn't about um, who, who said what, who did what. None of this. I'm your mother. I have actually been very, very diligently researched to try and prove that I actually harmed you guys by the Department of Human Services that was unfounded. Um, in fact, there was a finding, according to someone else, who said the unfounded on behalf of Brian should be questionable. <clears throat> and I am more than willing to talk about that in a higher court um, or in a civil court, in a civil matter. But um, the thing is, is that warning, Claire, I love you. I'm your mother, and I should be allowed to have an influence on your life. I should be allowed to have unfettered contact with you guys, text, email, phone call. I actually should be allowed to raise you as my own with full-time custody. Um, I know that the enemy is trying to get me to latch on to the spirit of offense and anger towards <clears throat> Brian, towards everyone involved in this situation, but I'm not going to. Um, I'm going to give it to God because ultimately, God's the one who's going to release whatever judgment he does. 
And as I was praying this morning, um, even for those who are opposing God and his will and his word, um, that the Lord breaks them. I wasn't praying the wrath of God upon them, although there were times in the future that that's where my heart was facing in the past, <clears throat> in the past. But currently, my prayer is that people come to the end of themselves before it's too late. Because when you come to the end of yourself, you have a choice. You can either choose to continue fighting against God, or you can cry out to him for his mercy, which he is so ready to give. And when the Lord breaks us, it allows us to cry out to him so that he can indwell in us. Um, and I know I'm not articulating these the way that I want to. And I'm sure at some point I will. Um, but my heart goes out even to Brian and Jill and Eric. Um, to Wyatt, most importantly, my son Wyatt. Because there were so many signs, so many things that I should have done as a mom. And I didn't. And it breaks my heart. Why it will have a choice. Prayerfully, it's not too late. <clears throat> and I guess it's never too late because God hasn't taken them home. I do know that he will use even those who turn away from him, those who rightful, not rightfully, those who say, no, I don't want you, Jesus. I don't want you, God. Or even those who say, I want you, Jesus, but they don't walk their life. They don't walk the talk. He'll actually use them to sharpen us. Because I was reflecting on like, God, I just don't understand. Why are these people who I know are completely opposing you? Why, why are they still here? And I'm not talking about people in, in our situation. I'm looking at the bigger picture. It could be our situation or the bigger picture, right? But I'm like, God, I don't understand. I mean, you can think back to Adolf Hitler, right? Like, why did you not just snuff his breath out of him immediately? Why didn't you do it? Even the evil, even the bad can be used to sharpen us. The bad can be used to break us, shatter us to a point that we do call out to God and call out for his mercy and repent and turn from our ways and come to him. Now, of course, that's our free will. It's our choice. We can choose it or we can turn from God. But in the end, when our, when our life is completely completed, we'll no longer have an opportunity to say yes to God. That choice will have been made before our life ended. And it will be, we'll be judged by our fruit. What was the fruit? We can talk and we can act like a Christian. We can even quote the scripture. We can pray. We can go to church. We can sing praises to Jesus. But what's in our heart? Do we trust him? Do we believe in him? Have we allowed him to come in no matter what? No matter how hard it is, do we trust him? And as much as I have been through what I believe, complete shattering, what I felt like is hell, I can stand before God and I know that God, I will be accessing the door, the narrow gate into heaven because I chose to press into Jesus and not turn away from him, not blame him, not be angry at him or mad at him. God did it for my interest. He did it so that I would receive salvation. And it wasn't him doing it. He allowed these circumstances to refine me. And that is my prayer for my enemies is that God breaks them, shatters them. So that way 
they can have an opportunity to come to the end of themselves and not rely on some false power or some false authority to keep them safe, but they will cry out to God for his mercy. So anyways, that's one day. That's what I wanted to share. And, um, I just want you guys to know, I love you. Why I know it's your birthday today. And I did say this prayer for you as well. And I will continue because I want to see you in heaven someday. I want to see the redemptive purposes and plan of God in your life. Um, and I can say this wholeheartedly because I know the you before, when you were young and innocent, and I know the now. And as much as I love you and I'm proud of you and I, you've done some incredible things on your own might and on your own power and maybe even through other people's power and authority. But imagine if you could do it through God's, the one who will not stop, the one who has doors to open to you that you couldn't even dream of. Like imagine locking arms with him and doing it with him. Amazing. I love you, Wyatt, and happy birthday. Father God, I just thank you so much for my children. I thank you for all three of them. Lord, I thank you that in this process of being broken, that we know we can reach out to you, that you have never left us, you have never forsaken us, even the worst of the worst of the worst crimes and sins. You're there waiting with open arms. In fact, you're crying with us and for us. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Jesus Christ, for what you did so that we can cry out to our Father, that we can repent and you will cleanse us with your blood that you poured out for us. Lord, I thank you for um, showing Wyatt your love today, especially as it's his birthday, that you haven't left him, you haven't forsaken him, and you are waiting there with open arms. Lord, I continue to pray over Warren and Clara. Lord, reunite us together. Lord, I ask that you expose everything in our lives that are that is being hidden, that is um, maybe even corrupting our very being, the person who you created us to be. Lord, expose everything that is in our lives that is keeping us from being who you created us to be. Lord, I pray that also as well, even over those who oppose you, those who oppose us. Lord, I pray that that they will come to the end of themselves and receive you. I pray, Lord, uh, may your will be done in Warren and Clara's life, in my life, in Wyatt's life, our family's life, here on earth as it is in heaven. I thank you, Father God, and I just ask you continue to bless Warren and Clara in your name. Amen. I love you guys. Happy birthday, Wyatt. Um, as you guys can see, I'm in Wyatt or in Warren's room today. I just felt it fitting. I've just <clears throat> my heart's been going up to Warren and Warren. I just want to let you know, um, nice job on your um exhibition night last night I wish I could have been there I wish I could have seen your presentation if you recorded your presentation I would love to see it um I'm proud of you Warren I'm very very proud of you you are incredible you are so blessed um I love you and I will see you guys tomorrow I love you too Clara I miss you I miss holding you. I miss your smiley, cheerful face. And your um, positive. You always had such a positive outlook on everything. I love you guys. Bye.